Hey everybody, my name is Justin. Welcome back to our BTR garage. Today we have some more truck modifications for you. We're gonna be installing a Hopkins backup rear view camera onto my 2010 Ford F-150. Now I have been towing my race cars on my open trailer for a little over three years now and I will tell you it gets pretty difficult and frustrating sometimes when you don't have a backup camera when it comes to lining up the hitch on your truck with the trailer. So now that I have a much larger trailer, I figured it was time to actually install a backup camera on the truck. This one from Hopkins is the Smart Hitch. It's actually a kind of dual mode trailer hitch alignment and backup camera camera. So it has two functions and from what I have read is pretty simple to install and works pretty well. What we're going to do is show you the mounting of the display in the cabin of the truck, how to route the cable through the 2010 Ford F-150 out of the body and underneath the truck into the back so we can connect it to the camera unit itself. Obviously the routing of the cable will differ depending on what type of truck you have as these Hopkins systems support all different kinds of vehicles. And then once we're done, we're gonna go ahead and test it out, see how it works. Hopefully it makes my life a little bit easier and more convenient when hitching up to the race car trailers. So let's go ahead and get started. So our Hopkins Smart Hitch comes packaged in this neat little box. This is model 50002. Again, it applies to a number of different vehicles. We're gonna open up the box, see what's inside. We have the small little display that comes with it. Nothing too fancy or high tech. Again, this is kind of a budget kit and I'll put the links in the description to the product where you can pick it up for yourself. I think I paid roughly 85 or $90 for it off of Amazon. So good value for the money. At least we'll find out how well it works. Uh, we also have the harness. This is a plug and play style harness, just plugs into your normal trailer harness. And then the wire loom that goes up to the display in the cabin. And then this is the heart of the unit, the license plate mounting bracket that has your camera. And then it also has sensors that swing out on the side here and these help warn you of alignment issues when lining up your trailer. And of course we have some manuals and it looks like some wire splices and screws. I'm not sure what those are used for just yet, but we'll figure out once we get into the instructions. Now, one thing I did read about this unit before I bought it was that it can sometimes get waterlogged or water can breach the electronics casing, which is this section back here and cause damage to the circuit board and things. So you can kind of see down in here where there is some cracks and seams. It looks like they tried to seal them off, but I'm gonna be extra safe and take some regular old silicon caulk and try to fill up those seams and cracks just to make sure we're not getting any water in there and hopefully extend the life of this particular unit. So I'm gonna start the installation off by actually running this long cable for the camera from the underside of the truck into the cabin in the pickup truck. Now on the 2010 Ford F-150, there is a little hole underneath the driver's side rear seat on the under of the car with a grommet in it. We're gonna splice a little hole in there where we can run the cable up into the car. And then there are some trim pieces we gotta take off, which we'll take a look at here. This is the rear seat of the truck. And basically what we do is pull up this little panel here, this little plastic panel, and it just pulls up by sticking your fingers up and giving it a pull. We'll get that all up and then the hole where the grommet is is actually down in this area. We're gonna have to figure out how to get the cable run underneath the panel here through the door sill right there and then under the panel on the front side. Once it comes through on the front side here, we'll run it underneath this little panel and then up through the side of the truck. And I might have to take the A pillar off on the top there. And ultimately we'll have our little display mounted up here, which you can't see because the light is blocking it out. But right about there is where we'll mount the camera. Now we are staring directly up from the underneath of the car under the driver's side rear seat. And here is that little grommet I was telling you about. You simply stick your fingers in there and pop it out. And then we have our hole, which we'll run the cable through after we pop those trim pieces off on the inside. A 
looking into the rear of the truck again under the trim piece you can see the daylight down there where the hole is where we took the rubber grommet out so we're going to grab our display wire and feed it up through there i used a small punch to make a hole in my little rubber grommet so that i could fish the cable through it and then we can use that to feed into the car Now we've brought the wire up through the hole as you can see again our daylight is right down in that area you can see where the cable goes now we'll continue to fish it up and through into the front of the cabin now to fish the wire through the trim up there i'm actually going to take some electrical tape and this long rod here tape the connector around that rod you can use an old coat hanger or something like that, just something somewhat rigid to get it attached like so. You'll wanna peel back the trim piece down here just a little bit. Take your tool and fish it up towards the front. Let's take a look at the front side now. You can see it came through pretty successfully so we can pull it through here undo the electrical tape and then start pulling more wire through and bring it up the channel on the bottom and the next part is getting it up through the pillar in the side of the car with the cable now routed through this channel here i actually fitted it underneath the tape just to keep it safe we're going to go up the inside of this panel here you can pull away the trim and kind of stuff it back in there and then it gets a little bit easier up here there is this hole, just give it a pull, and this whole panel comes out. And then that exposes that area in there where we can easily run the cable up through there, and then eventually it'll come out up into the top of the dash area here. And to make things even easier, you can actually pop out this lower panel here. I just pulled that one out as well. There's no screws or anything, just give it a tug from the bottom here or down here and it pulls right out so now routing that cable will be pretty simple i'll do that offline because i can't really mount the camera in here so with the wire routed up into this area now you want to account for the wire that comes off of the display itself since i'm going to be mounting mine up in this area want to have the wire come through into the panel and have enough slack in case I need to adjust the location of that wire. So just keep that in mind when routing the rest of your cable. I have a lot of slack up in this area. Now the wire from the display has been slipped underneath the A-pillar there and comes down through behind this piece. And now you can see we have both cables down here ready to connect to each other. Once that is done, you can start pulling back some of the slack from up here and back down through the channel. Start pulling it through and then taking it back to where the cable comes out, where the grommet is. Put the grommet back in its place like so, and then we'll start routing the cable down the underside of the car to the rear. As for routing the cable underneath the truck, you're going to have to be creative and figure out what is the best way for your particular vehicle. On the F-150, there is this big harness loom that goes all the way to the back of the truck. So I'm going to follow that all the way to the back and zip tie the cable to that as we go. So a typical Colorado surprise thunderstorm, it looked like it was gonna hail. Had to bring my BRZ inside the garage and rearrange the truck here. But now that we have those wires routed, we're ready to go ahead and get to the easy part. I think routing the wire underneath the car and getting the camera mounted was the hardest part of the job. The rest of it is just plug and play. So we're gonna get down here, get the license plate off, 
mount up the camera unit and then attach the corresponding plugs and hopefully if the rain stops we can get outside and test this thing out. Now mounting the license plate and the license plate camera mount kit is pretty straightforward and I now know why they gave us those longer screws and that's because you need these to attach your license plate with the camera mount because it has extra width on the back here so we we'll use those to mount everything in place. And one thing you want to do before you go forward with this, if you don't have a hole in your bumper like I do right here, you'll want to drill a little hole in there big enough to fit the cable. Uh, obviously make sure there's nothing behind there in case you do need to drill a hole. What we're going to do is take that master cable off the back of the unit here and route it through the hole. And then the next step is actually sliding the license plate into the camera mount. It fits underneath the sensors and the camera. So you kind of got to get it fit into the little groove there. So that's what it looks like when it is together. And then we can just take this, slide the cord through the hole, and then mount the license plate up like usual. So hopefully you already have a truck that is wired for a trailer and has the trailer connection on the back here, this little guy down below, because what's behind it is just a plug that goes into it and you can more or less just reach around here and find the clip and give it a little pull and it pops right out. So that's the plug that we're actually going to take our adapter, our splitter that comes with the backup camera kit and take the larger section of that connector, that's this one here, that has the male plugs on the inside. We're gonna connect that to the truck connector. And make sure it snaps into place nice and secure. Then we simply take the other side of it and plug that into the back of the truck connector on the bumper. And obviously it helps to get under there and take a little peek, make sure you're orienting the plug right. But once it's on there, it shouldn't come out. Nice and secure again. And then the final connection is connecting the backup camera unit itself, the little cable that we stuck through the hole behind the license plate connecting that one with the cable from the display that we brought from the front of the truck. With that connected, you are done with the connection pieces. It's just a matter of tidying up and tying up all this extra wire length that we have left. I'm gonna roll this up, bundle it up, and then zip tie it to one of the other uh, bundles underneath the truck here. So let's jump in the truck and see if it works. And I haven't actually buttoned up any of the plastic pieces, the trim pieces or anything like that. Just in case things didn't work, I could go back to the wiring or reroute or unroute if I needed to. So let's take a look at the display. It's off right now in park. Now we'll put it into reverse. And sweet, we have a display. Which is very hard to get the camera on with the sun coming in here, but you can see it does work. We'll try backing up a little bit here. You can see my hitch, the guiding lines. That was my truck beeping at me. Now the unit is actually beeping at me too, I think. I think we can turn up the volume, there we go. And this thing isn't mounted yet either. <laughs> it's just kind of sitting in here. So it's telling you when stuff is getting close. All right, we'll go ahead and shut it off because it looks like it's working. All right, so that went well. We can go ahead and use that when hooking up to the big trailer. And like I said, I can go ahead and button up the rest of the trim pieces down here.
And once we get that stuff back together, I think we are pretty much done with this thing. All right, everybody, there we go. Installation is complete for the Hopkins Smart Hitch rear backup camera on the 2010 Ford F-150. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. If you wanna take a look at this product, check out the links down in the description below. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And like always, let me know if you have any thoughts or comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. Stick around for more good stuff coming up real soon. I am checking out, we'll talk to you all next time.